a gotta watch. G-A-D-A. Apparently that stands for go anywhere, do anything. I just can't figure out if I'm too young or too old not to have known that. But anyway, today we're going to talk about what, in my opinion, is the best gotta watch. That sounds terrible. I'm Max and this is WatchCrunch. WatchCrunch.com is a new online community we're building for people like you and I to have more fun and positive watch discussions. More on that at the end of the video. But first, as watch collectors, we make this distinction, whether it's real or not, between dress watches and sports watches. And supposedly dress watches are typically smaller, usually time-only pieces for formal events. And sports watches are ones with bigger bezels, extra pushers, more geared toward casual occasions. But we have to remember that most normal people don't make these distinctions and also they don't aspire to have like a 20 watch collection with a watch for every occasion. So when my friends ask me to recommend them a good watch, the dilemma is always to choose a watch that covers the most ground that will look equally at home with shorts and a t-shirt as well as a suit. So anyway, in this video, we're gonna talk about why I think the newest Aquaterra is just that perfect do everything watch, but I will also cover one or two reasons why it might not still be perfect. Aqua Terra literally translates to water and land, making it pretty apparent that Omega is trying to cover their bases here. And the newest evolution of the AT comes from a line of watches that hails back to 2002. Now, if you've been paying attention to the Aqua Terra line, you can see these two decades of small tweaks manifested in this watch. First, that dial. We have a blue sunburst finish and a pattern of horizontal engravings set to resemble the teak deck of a boat. This look went from vertical to horizontal in, I think, 2017. The imagery probably is conjured up by an overly enthused marketing department. The iridescent blue changes from a pale color to more deep, depending on the light and the angle. It's frankly got a bit of Nautilus 5711 about it, which is not a bad thing. At the periphery, we find a white minute track that's slightly recessed, reminiscent of a pie pan dial. The sporty aquatic theme is carried forth in the arrow-tipped minute hand, just like in the Planet Ocean line. These hands otherwise are full of detail. For example, the hour hand has a loomed center section, whereas the minute hand is brushed in the center with polished beveled size that is only loomed at the tip. These sharp triangular themes is mirrored in the hour indices. These little chiseled pyramids slope downwards toward the center of the dial aggressive little details that scream, don't you dare call me a dress watch. And all of this is housed under a slightly domed anti-reflective sapphire. Then we come to the big update for 2021, moving the second hand from the center to its own subdial as six. For some, this harkens back to a vintage look of the mid-century, and there's good reason for that. See, back then it was actually easier to place a second hand separate from the center of the dial, as the train of wheels corresponding to the second action is physically apart from the wheels that drive the hour or minute hands. But vintage nostalgia aside, I have a soft spot for small seconds. Visually, when you look at a three-hander, the only real visible moving part is the second hand. Thus, the hour and minute hands share a lot more in common with each other than with their frantic little sibling. Moving this element to a separate part of the dial, in essence, creates two separate visual foci. One being the geometric center of the watch, and the other at six being the center of kinetic motion on the watch. There is a distribution of labor for your eyes, and it's also more interesting to look at. The date window on the Aquaterra line moved from the three to the six o'clock position, I think also in 2017, which was a good move for dial symmetry. Even cleverer now is to integrate this into the bottom of the small second subdial. Now it's less conspicuous, and if you weren't looking for it, you might just miss it. 
However, if I had one criticism, and I had to dig deep for this one, is that the colorway here, which is my favorite, I wish the subdial didn't have such a large white border. I feel that it kind of detracts from the elegance of the small seconds and puts too much visual emphasis on the bottom of the dial, especially when the hands are stacked near there at six. Okay, now before we move on to the rest of the watch, guys, please go down and drop a like for this video. It really helps us to continue to bring you these new releases. Now moving on to the case, we find a shape that's been refined over the decades this model, which stands at 41 millimeters, is on paper bigger than actually in the metal, thanks to the 47 millimeters lug to lug and a slight reduction in the case height. This combined with these iconic twisted liar lugs makes it wear surprisingly well, even on my six and a half inch wrist. Now, Omega does make a 38 millimeter version of this watch, which for some reason is only shown on female models on their website, but you'd have to forego the teak dial and a bit of power reserve. So this is the one time you'll hear me say, go for the bigger one, you won't regret it. The finishing on the case here is superb with complex overlapping surfaces of brush and polish to keep your eye satiated. Even the screw down crown, which keeps the watch dry down to 150 meters, has different textures and a unique conical shape. Now, if you ever get tired of looking at all of these details in the front, turn the watch over and the party starts all over again. You'd be hard pressed to find a better looking movement this side of 10 grand with dramatic wave-like graining on the rotor, perlage on the base plate, and heat-treated screws. There's also plenty of tech to back up that pretty face. Aquaterras, since their inception, have utilized the coaxial movement. This is, of course, the invention of the late George Daniels, who reimagined the escapement to utilize a double-tiered wheel. And compared with the Swiss lever system, the coaxial escapement promises less friction, more reliability and longer service intervals. However, early Aquaterras weren't considered true coaxials because it was basically an ETA built around a coaxial escapement and they had their own share of issues. In the Caliber 8916, we get a true in-house coaxial movement that is Meta certified chronometer with anti-magnetism lasting 60 hours with twin barrels and accurate to zero to plus five a day. A jump hour function also allows you to easily move between time zones without having to reset the whole watch. To top it all off, we have a wonderful rubber strap that is equally thought out. Now, I'd usually recommend that you buy a watch on a bracelet, but this strap is stellar. Rubber is about the most sporty material you can make a strap out of, but here the cross weave pattern along with the side stitching adds some class, making this about the dressiest rubber strap I've ever seen. So the newest Aquaterra is the best Aquaterra in my opinion, and may very well be the last watch anybody would need. It's not easy to walk that fine line between dressy and sporty and still retain a personality. When I ask folks on WatchCrunch for other candidates for a good everyday watch, contenders that came up include the Zen 556, the Hamilton Jazzmaster and Khaki Field Line, the Laurier Falcon, and the Dress KX. Oh, and of course the Rolex Explorer, but we're talking about watches you can actually buy. Speaking of watch crunch, this is a passion project that a couple of watch friends and I have been working on over the pandemic and we just opened to the public. See, we got tired of the negativity of the old stale watch forums, but felt like apps like Instagram sometimes is more about flexing than connecting with others. So we decided to combine the best of both worlds and develop a online platform for watch nerds built by watch nerds, really to have a more modern interface and a thoughtful place for better watch discussions. So check out watchcrunch.com, go claim your name and your profile. Also guys, in the comments below, let me know your vote for the best gotta watch. Gotta, I'm gonna stop saying that. Subscribe if you wanna see more reviews like this and as always, take care and I'll see you next time.